today's been awesome as far as my league coordinator. Sox nerd, he's got the best job, doesn't he? <laughs> uh, now here comes the night, no, I'm kidding. Uh, looking into the 2018 Chicago White Sox season, I've been a lot of questions as far as people that do their work on SoxMachine.com, ask questions to the podcast, even when I get an opportunity to go on radio, I get this question often. Who are the Chicago White Sox going to be in 2018? Can this young team be like the Cubs and shock the world and win 98 games after they were in the 60s? And to help us give us an idea, uh, a friend of the podcast, a friend of mine from ESPN.com, Dan Zaborski, uh, created the Zips Projections. When these came out for the Chicago White Sox, oh my lord, White Sox fans were not happy. These were not the numbers that they were expecting to see, especially when it came to wins above replacement. As you can see here, Jose Abreu is projected to be the most valuable player for the White Sox and only 2.6 wins above replacement. I think White Sox fans were hoping to see better numbers from Yohan Mikata, better numbers from Lucas Giolito, even Ronaldo Lopez at only 1.4. And when you look at these numbers, it suggests, man, this team may not win 70 games. Zips has to be conservative. Well, I looked into that. Dan Zaborski has been publicly releasing this information since 2013. That's a big enough sample size to see how have the White Sox compared to their Zips projections at season's end. Pitching-wise, pretty good. But the pitching hasn't been the problem for the White Sox and the reason why they're in the rebuild. The White Sox have simply not scored enough runs support a Chris Sale or a Jose Quintana. That's why those pitchers were moved. So I took a look as, and <coughs> tried to ask the question to myself and answer, how have the White Sox hitters fared against their zips projections? And I will warn you, White Sox fans, I'm going to take you down a bad path of memories <laughs> in the last five seasons here, uh, because zips is not conservative. Zips is actually too optimistic. And we're going to take a look at here because there are some trends, though, that there is a silver lining heading into the 2018 season. We'll start with the 2013 Chicago White Sox. Zips actually liked the White Sox heading into 2013. They thought, the computer thought they were a 500 team. Alas, you can look at the left-hand column. That's what Zips projected for their war total and what they ended up being. Paul Canerco being four wins worse than his projection was a big punch in the gut. And as you can see, there's a lot of red on this list, very few green. Green are the players that have surpassed their projection, and red is below. Now, if you're red, there's three reasons why. One, playing time. Maybe you didn't get as much playing time as Zips projected you to be. Injury, of course, limits the amount of time that you're on the field. And of course, number three is ineffectiveness. Look at Dionisiato, Adam Dunn, a 0.3 wins above replacement, he's one win worse. Jeff Kappinger, if you remember that great tale, I told you I'm taking down a bad path here, White Sox fans. Josh Fagley is on this list. So obviously the White Sox were 63 and 99. In 2014, Zips thought the White Sox were a 74 win team. This was kind of a mini rebuild for the White Sox. They knew they weren't going to be competing. They had a lot of young players, let them play, and there's new Cuban first baseman. Jose Abreu came around, and Zips didn't really know what to do with Jose Abreu. Zips thought Abreu would hit 22 home runs and drive in 66 runs. But we learned very quickly in April that Jose Abreu could be a monster. He set the new home run record for rookies with 10 and he won the American League Rookie of the Year, and Jose Abreu blasted his zip projection by a full three wins, but also so did Alexei Ramirez by a win. Adam Eaton is part of that trade with the Arizona Diamondbacks, beat his projection. Remember when we were buying into Connor Gillespie being a third baseman? He did well. And uh, this is where <laughs> I still argue with White Sox fans to this day. Tyler Flowers started to turn a corner and his play, even though White Sox fans do not want to admit it still this day. In 2015, obviously after the 2014 season, if everybody remembers, that's when Jerry Reinstorf decided, let's go for it. So Rick Hahn made the Jeff Samarja trade. He signed Melvin Cabrera, David Robertson, Adam LaRoche. The White Sox were very active in that offseason. 
However, Zips didn't like any of the signings or trades the White Sox made. They only thought they were a 77 win team. And the White Sox were 76 and 86. And as you can see here, offensively, every move that Rick Hahn made just did not go to plan. Melky Cabrera was almost two wins worse than his projection. Adam LaRoche was almost three wins worse. Remember we were buying the Connor Gillespie? Nope. Uh, Avi, he was healthy, but Zips didn't really think he was going to be a big contributor. He was in the negative. Uh, and uh, Alexa Ramirez then, again, fell off the shelf as age started to impact his play. And the White Sox only won 76 games. Should be shot for Yes, J.B. Shuck wasn't as bad <laughs> as Zips thought. <laughs> and Trace Thompson did play. That is remarkable to get to negative point six, because he was hardly in there. But he was bad. Yeah. Uh, in 2016, <laughs> somehow when the White Sox acquired Todd Frazier, and with another year of the age curve of Chris Sale and Jose Quintana and Adam Eaton and Jose Abreu, Zips really liked the White Sox. Zips thought the White Sox were going to be an 84-win team, finish second in the American League Central behind the Cleveland Indians. And man, when the White Sox are 23-10, Zips thought the most projectable World Series outcome would have been the White Sox and the Cubs. Yeah. Then the Memorial Day Massacre happened. The White Sox went from 23-10 to 33-36. To and, and as you can see, the White Sox ended up being 78-84. But Adam Eaton blew past his projection. I, I was concerned going into that season, how well would Adam Eaton do in right field? He shocked everybody, posting a six-win season. Todd Frazier wasn't as valuable as Zips thought he would be. He was only two and a half wins. Jose Bray had a bad year. So you can kind of see where offensively, you do get some surprises, like the rookie Tim Anderson. Very limited playing time, only 90 games, and he was worth two and a half wins. So it does give you some hope going into the 2017 season, but we know in the offseason the White Sox decided to hit the reset button and start rebuilding. They traded Chris Sale, they traded Adam Eaton. So last year, to start the year, Zips thought the White Sox were a 76-win team. Now, of course, the White Sox made significant trades during the season, and they ended up being just a 67-win team. And I highlighted in yellow, Todd Frazier was traded, Melky Cabrera was traded, but you did see some progress here. Jose Abreu had a four-win season, which is tremendous. Yomer Sanchez took a big step forward uh, with a two-win season. And Avi. Avi went from someone that Zip thought should be playing Major League Baseball. And if a general manager was consulting with Dan Zaborski, Dan Zaborski would look at Zips and consult to that team, no, he is not a major leaguer. Shocked the world, made the All-Star game, and was the White Sox most valuable hitter, according to fan graphs, at 4.2 wins above replacement, and was above four. So some trends going into this year, looking at just the Zips projections. There's two good trends if you're a White Sox fan, and one bad one. The good four to six players on their team, hitters-wise, are going to outperform their Zips projections. We know that based on the trends of the last five years. So if you look at the White Sox hitters, you can pick four to six guys that are going to do better than what Zips is thinking. The other good is that one player is going to smash their Zips projections. And by smash, I mean three wins better than their projection. Jose Abreu did it, Adam Eaton did it, and Avi did it last year. I asked Dan who is the most likely candidate to do that. And he thinks it's Tim Anderson because of Tim Anderson's defense. Tim Anderson, according to Zips, is only projected to be nine tenths, so like a one-win player coming into the year. But if Anderson hits the way that he did in September, and if he continues to make progressions in his defense, Dan thinks that Tim Anderson could be a four-win shortstop, which is what the White Sox really need going into the rebuild. Not quite all-star, because obviously you got Correa and Francisco Lindor and Gregorius in New York, uh, but it's definitely the step in the right direction for Tim Anderson. Now the bad news. Out of those four to six players, everyone's going to do worse than their projection. And that's not good because there are 13 <laughs> players right now for the White Sox that are only projected to be half win or better. These are the players on the margins. Uh, I think Nicky DeBonico could be one of those four to six players that beats their projections. 
but if he gets hurt or if he's ineffective, he could be one that drops off. Uh, you, you got your uh, Casey Gillespie who could possibly be part of the mix. Maybe he doesn't meet his projection. And maybe we don't see Aloy Jimenez for XYZ reason until September. He's currently projected to be the White Sox third most valuable hitter and he's going to start the year in Birmingham. So that's kind of how weak the White Sox hitting is going into the 2018 season until these rookies get acclimated to the major leagues and start making their mark.